Hello, Cheap Ari here. Today we're going to be doing a review of Horizon Chase 2. This is a sequel to Horizon Chase Turbo that is a very nostalgic arcade racer that came out some years ago on the Nintendo Switch. For this review, we're going to be reviewing the sequel on Nintendo Switch as well. However, keep in mind that this game is available across all platforms and mobile. So we're going to break into what the game's about and really what attracts gamers to this specific video game racer. So for the purposes of this review, I'll be playing this game on an Arcade 1UP style setup. So what I've done here is I've taken the existing Arcade 1UP guts, like the PCB and the monitor, pulled them out and put in my own monitor that can connect with any HDMI console of any sort. And I've also purchased a Mario wheel, which is compatible as a third party, or actually first party accessory to the Nintendo Switch so I can play Horizon Chase 2 via this arcade setup. Now, in terms of the existing arcade deck, I've pulled that out and I've cut to size a wooden plank that is the exact dimensions of the Arcade 1UP arcade deck. And I made sure to keep in these four screw holes so that I can screw in and attach it to the arcade deck so that it wouldn't move. And of course, with this accessory, it can clasp and tighten to any type of table or again, this piece of wood, so it won't move anywhere. So again, very inexpensively, just with a cheap piece of wood, a third party or first party wheel that is compatible with your console, I've been able to set up my own kind of arcade that is very much like the old uh, OutRun uh, arcade systems or the current Arcade 1UP OutRun uh, or um, some of the Ridge Racer cabinets they have right now. Now, of course, with Horizon Chase, it is compatible with this wheel and with the pedals themselves. So you're getting that full arcade experience. OutRun was an arcade game that came about in 1986 from Sega. It burst onto the scene with this excellent fast paced racing that kind of had this forced perspective between a 2D plane and these objects, these 2D sprites coming at you to give the sensation that you were moving and the sensation of speed. It was succeeded by OutRunners and a number of other entries. As the franchise began to expand to other entries and copycats, it really began to branch out in terms of the number of complexities that they do with each stage to give you that almost 3D perspective and also just take you around the world in different countries, different landscapes, and different challenges. It really was a way to kind of just blow your mind and kind of expand and make the racing kind of market more complex in arcades. Now, fast forward to today, Horizon Chase Turbo came out in about 2018 on mobile systems before expanding out onto consoles. Now, very much taking the inspiration of OutRun and its other successors, it has that same type of close perspective to the vehicle along with kind of being reactive to the streets and the kind of the curves of the track. With its hyperactive 80s enthused soundtrack, this was a great opportunity for those to kind of experience OutRun, but more of a 3D kind of mix with the 2D kind of perspective. It was an excellent addition to the arcade racing market. With Horizon Chase Turbo being a success on all consoles and mobile, it was inevitable that a sequel would come out. Horizon Chase 2 kind of takes the concept of Horizon Chase Turbo and kind of advances it into more of a full landscape of 3D. And that's kind of the experiences we had with racers going into the mid 90s with Ridge Racer and Beetle Adventure Racing and Cruising USA and San Francisco Rush and all the like. Now, just on initial impressions alone, you'll notice a couple things. There are plenty of load screens. Even if you're trying to play a race and you screw up and you want to restart the race, you have to go through a little bit of a load time. And that's kind of annoying considering this is not necessarily a modernized racer. This is supposed to be more of a budget title. Now, the game itself, as you can tell, is literally like OutRun, except more of an updated version. So the camera is tight on the vehicles themselves. You're more about reacting to the road as opposed to kind of seeing what's in front of you and kind of taking shortcuts and stuff like that. That isn't that type of game. It is very much like an updated OutRun, but with a full 3D landscape. And that's okay in certain regards, but in, in other regards, it's very much like 
confused in its nostalgia approach. Now, in terms of the arcade elements themselves, beyond the gameplay, of course, you have the ability to kind of collect coins and use them for upgrades. You gain XP. Uh, each uh, race has about 15 XP that you can apply to kind of building up your cars along with the coins that you uh, are able to collect on the road. And of course, there are plenty of unlockables by kind of going through the world championship mode and just kind of beating each continent with US and Brazil and Thailand, just going through each one of these countries and being able to kind of unlock each as you kind of build up your repertoire of vehicles. Now, as you see here, I'm using the Ori racing wheel. This is the Mario Kart racing wheel that works great for Mario Kart on the Nintendo Switch. And it works for the most part with this game. However, I did notice that this wheel is a bit uh, finicky with respect to the pedals. Now, if you were to press on the gas like you see here and then let your foot off the gas when you're pressing the brake, it really messed everything up as if I was changing gears on a manual vehicle as opposed to playing automatic. Now, it kind of, when I left my foot off of the gas and then pressed the brake, and then I put my foot on the gas, it didn't recognize my foot being planted on the gas again. So I kind of learned that I should always have my foot on the gas and just pump the brakes if I was looking to not kind of stop the race altogether. So that was really the best way for this racing wheel to work with Horizon Chase 2. Now, another complaint I have is in terms of the nighttime racing. While racing during the daytime looks pretty great on the Nintendo Switch, the nighttime racing can look a little drab, to be honest with you, and a little muddy. And for a game that really goes off of the, the kind of the characteristics and the charm of the graphics itself, it's a little bit disappointing that sometimes the graphics at night can look so kind of pixelated and just honestly sometimes uh, not that great. Now, besides the World Tour mode, which is kind of like your main career mode, they also have a tournaments mode, which is, again, four matches in a series of races, again, standard to what you might find in the first game. But the new mode, Playground, has online, which I do not remember in Horizon Chase Turbo, the first game. And it also allows you to do these missions and goals that are specific to each race. So as I continue to play more and more with the game, I began to enjoy it a little bit more than my initial thoughts. It is a bit confusing with respect to what they're trying to go for here with much of nostalgia kind of having been lost with this new iteration. It's not OutRun. It's not any of the more modern racers. It's not any of the racers from the 90s. It's kind of trying to be a mix of both. And it, in the same cases, it kind of celebrates everything with respect to the arcade racers of the late 80s and 90s. But um, I do wish that there was a little bit more going on here that, that felt familiar and more engaging. But um, again, there's plenty once you start getting into the game that really kind of jump out at you. If you're driving across the Midwest of the US and you're going into some of these other countries like Thailand, it really feels like you're getting a mix of need for speed or in this case maybe some cruise in so again it kind of celebrates all of it without not actually kind of moving the needle and advancing the market of racers or arcade racers in that respect so there's still plenty of fun to be had just not as much fun as i hope for I can extend the life of the game with the playground mode and the tournament mode. Now with the playground mode, of course, that has your online and also has these series of challenges that you can play in solo. Uh, and they give, give you these goals and missions and accomplishments of what you're supposed to do in the race besides just finishing in first. Like you can't hit anybody. You have to uh, not use your nitrous during the match. It's again, trying to give you these different challenges besides just finishing in first. Now with the tournaments mode, that is just kind of your standard race for matches and kind of continue on to the next tournament. Um, pretty much standard fare there, but uh, in order to unlock tournament modes or the different kind of different tournaments within the tournament mode, you have to complete uh, certain aspects of the world tour, like being able to complete all of USA or completing all of Brazil or completing all of Thailand. Uh, and there's plenty of different exciting aspects of this game in terms of unlockables, besides the aforementioned upgrades and modifications to your vehicles, uh, besides being able to open new tracks, 
it really becomes a little bit crazier in terms of how expansive the different races, the different locales of this game that open up, including a final kind of section of the game that takes place on the moon and kind of evokes that whole feel of Cruising USA. So there's plenty to experience in this game as you kind of give it some time. Uh, as I said, not the best racer on the market, not far from being a bad game, but it's just nothing really new or engaging here. It's not even that nostalgic trip uh, that you have from the first one, but still enough to for, for about 15 bucks on sale. I think that's a good pickup if you're purchasing this on Nintendo Switch or any of the aforementioned consoles that this game is on. Uh-oh, guys, red shell. That does it for me, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.